Good evening and welcome to episode 7 of Adventures in Haskell. This evening we are going to address a bug which I'm hoping at least one of you spotted in the uh, result of the previous video and if you haven't spotted any major bugs in the uh, previous version then I urge you to stop now, go back and have a look. Right, so those of you that are left know what the bug is so let's get on with fixing it. The bug, quite simply, is that if we run our calculator and we define a foo function that takes x and just returns it and we define a bar function that takes x and returns foo of x plus x and we try to print bar of anything we get this error unknown identifier x which makes no sense at all until we think back to how we did our function invocation in our function invocation, here we are, we merrily inserted our argument, interpreted the function expression, and then deleted the argument. Unfortunately, that means that when we shadow a, an argument, like we do here, we have a problem. Very, very quick fix is just to put our original context back instead, and that will fix that bug for us. So let's just demonstrate that now. Foo of x is um, x plus 1. Bar of x is uh, 2 times foo of x plus x. Bar of 10 is therefore 32, which we can verify as 10. Foo of x gives us 11. Twice that is 22, plus our original 10 gives us 32. So that's our bug fix. And the other problem for the calculator is that if we have a parse error, we can carry on. But if instead we have um, a missing variable, we end up exiting. So we'd like to add some error recovery to our calculator. To add error recovery to our calculator, we're going to stack up another monad onto our calculator type and the uh, monad that we're going to use is called error t. If you go to Google and you search for error t then the first hit will be for the mtl package for controlled.monad.error and that's what we're going to be using. Very briefly error t is an error is a transformer monad which allows us to fail an operation and if an execution of a statement fails we want the state to be rolled back we don't want any changes to that state to have any effect so we're going to wrap our state monad inside our error monad if instead we wanted the state to be preserved we'd wrap the error monad inside the state monad but we don't want that so our current calculator is a cannot fail calculator no matter what happens that calculator sorry I'm going completely mad. Yes, our current calculator can't can't fail. There's no way that that can fail safely. If it fails, it's going to exit our program. We don't want that. But we can have an ordinary calculator, which is an error t. Let's just go with strings for now. That string is our error type. Cannot fail calculator a. We need to put our type variables in, and if we remove them from the cannot fail calculator, then uh, we should be most of the way there. Emacs is telling me that there's no type constructor error t, so let's go and import that. Import control.monad.error. Come back down to our interpreter. That error has gone away. We can keep scrolling through. And the only problem is left is that main can't run because, well, it's not a state t anymore it's an error t of a state t so let's go ahead and say that our main calculator function cannot fail which moves our error into there and our line by line calculator function cannot fail which means that we only need to think about our interpret statement and the easiest way for us to think about our interpret statement is for us to get our error result back and pass the state through. So if we just do result comes from that, uh, case result of, 
it's either going to be an error on the left, in which case we do the same idea, idea again as we did above. Let's say it's run error. Or it's a result, in which case we're just going to do nothing because that's what we need to do. We've got one more little hiccup, and that means that I need that tick there. And we're getting there now. What's left here? Well, interpret statement needs to run to get, we need to get that error out. And we do that with run error t, just like we did run eval state t here to get our state out at the end. So we've run our error. The result, the rest of that is, so run error t of interpret statement is a state operation which returns an either string empty. So this means that now when we run our calculator, a parse error has the same behavior, and a runtime error gives us something we, where we can carry on. This is really valuable, and it's going to be important going forward. So today we've fixed two bugs. We've added error recovery, and we have corrected a problem where we were shadowing a variable. I know this one's a short one, but uh, I just wanted to introduce another monad transformer stacking up on our stack. And uh, just to cover once again, the reason that we put the error t outside the state t is because we want to be in a situation where um, we either succeed at running our entire calculator or we fail. And that's why we wrap it up that way. Okay, uh, I will see you next time when we're going to try and add conditionals, uh, which will be a little bit more hairy. And with that, therefore, we should be able to do recursive function definitions and have a go at implementing uh, some Fibonacci type sequences. See you then. Bye bye.